everyone, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio. We met a couple of months ago, and the, at the end of that lesson, I said, oh, next time we meet, we'll paint a fox. Well, guess what? I just didn't feel like painting a fox, and, and day after day went by, and I just kept thinking, oh, gosh, I don't want to paint that fox right now. And so I just didn't paint anything. Oh, my goodness, what an excuse. Anyway, um, today I'm going to just detour, and we're going to paint a dog. Yeah, I hope you don't mind. We'll get to that fox someday, I hope. But uh, I'm going to stop promising and just paint whatever I feel like. Yeah. Anyway, uh, for all of you guys that live in Europe and various different countries outside of the United States who are wanting to know, is it as crazy in the United States as it looks like on the news? The answer is, yes, it is. It's absolutely this crazy. And for, uh, for those of you who have banned Americans from coming to your country, good for you because about 50% at least of our population does not quite understand this whole pandemic thing yet. It hasn't quite sunk in and so they are not taking proper precautions and so you need to really protect yourself. Just saying. All right. Well, that's my little, you know, speech for today. Um, I'd like to go ahead. Oh, I want to show you a couple of little things on my Etsy site, nettykstudio.etsy.com. Uh, I have these little, you know, pet portraits you can order. This one's on canvas. This is an 8x10. Uh, I've got a special running uh, on, on canvas, and I've got one on panel that you can just pop into a frame really, really easy. You know, one of those Michaels frames or Hobby Lobby type frames. Really super easy. Um, but this is a canvas, and they take a little bit uh, broader type um, frame if you're going to frame them. But here's a really fun idea. Okay. Um, these little guys, this is an original, the same dog uh, that is on a 3x5 Smooth Artist panel. Love it. It is so fun and it's got such nice detail in it. You can order those for only $38 and that includes shipping in the United States. Okay, just saying. That's my commercial. NettieKStudio.etsy.com. Please go there and uh, pick something out and, uh, and I'll paint it for you as fast as I possibly can and as beautifully as I possibly can. So let's get on with our little dog painting. Yeah. Now I have uh, from one of my patrons, a patron is somebody who purchases more than one painting for their own collection or to give away. And so this is a really cute little dog with uh, its head cocked a little bit and uh, a little tongue sticking out. And this dog always has the tongue sticking out all the time. So we're going to paint that little tongue in there as well. Okay. so. Now, I've got uh, this square canvas right here, and so what I'd like to do is I want to put in uh, an, a line across where uh, I think where the angle of the eyes are going to be. I'm going to tilt this angle a little bit more than uh, what it actually is because I want this dog to look even cuter than that. So I'm going to tilt the eyes, and it might be actually fairly close. Uh, and then I want to do this kind of, uh, what do we call this, perpendicular line. And I'm going to take that line and kind of go this direction. And that's going to be the, the T-square in the middle of the head. That's going to help me figure out where everything else has to land. I don't want to do too much more with my chalk. I'm going to go ahead and take my brush and begin with a few colors. These are pretty basic colors, you guys. They're, um, you know, black, raw umber. Uh, raw sienna, burnt sienna, and um, some transparent orange. Transparent orange that is uh, made by Gamblin. And then uh, let's see, I've got some burnt umber as well, and some um, some neo magelp, which is just a medium. You can use liquid. You can use all kinds of different things. And so now I'm going to come back in here and pick up a little bit of my my liquid, and not liquid, my my neo magelp, my medium. And I'm going to put a little bit of this uh, burnt aram or whatever I just got on my brush. And I'm going to come down and about the middle of this, uh, middle of it, I'm going to put in a little nose right here. And I think I'm going to do this about the same uh, size as the photo. That really helps. If you blow your photo up exactly the same as, uh, as where you're going to paint, it really helps. You don't have to translate it in your brain. Okay. so. Uh, what this is now, I've got this line that helps me to keep that straight, all right, so that I don't all of a sudden straighten out the nose 
and make it, you know, not the head not tilted. You got to tilt the nose just the same as you do uh, the whole head. So, uh, so now I'm going to keep that on this wonderful tilt. It looks like a little T with wings right there. And then a V at the bottom, a little V at the bottom. You can watch lots of my little dog painting uh, videos to, to learn about how to make these noses. This one seems to have a nostril that goes up and down. So I'm just taking this little, what have I got a number eight or something? I don't know what it is, a filbert. No, this is a flat. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. Number eight flat uh, from uh, Dick Blick or something, Blick Scholastic. And I've got these little things and then I put a little hook there on the nose. And I'll, I, I don't want to connect them up totally, but we put it in like that. And there's just the beginning part of that nose. Front plane of the nose is rather dark, so I'm going to add just a little bit of black to my brown. At the bottom, we'll make this just a little bit darker at the bottom. And then uh, I think that I'll make it a little dark around the outside. And you know, the nose isn't just totally black, you guys. No, it's not. So I'm going to take some of this um, raw sienna. Raw sienna is about the color of my hair, all right? And uh, I'm going to take a little bit of that. I'm going to put a little bit. Oh, you know what? I'm going to add a tiny bit of um, turquoise, raw sienna, and some brown. I'm just messing around, kind of making an interesting warm gray. All right. A little warm gray, a little bit of that. And then I'm going to uh, make this just a little bit lighter. And then I'll fill it in a little bit. And then I'm going to come in with uh, some white on top of that into that mixture and we're going to make the top plane lighter. See that? It's kind of a, a, a light beigey brown color and then I'm going to split it down the middle like that. Okay, good. There we go. Now I'm going to take some uh, of my transparent orange and white and we're going to create this little lip down here. I'm going to work my way out and I'm picking up a little bit of that nose, uh, that dark brown in there, just to give it kind of some interesting stuff there as far as the, it makes the fur look like it's real fur. Now, it's not very far down. I've got this, ah, I'm going to put that dark black back in. Dark black, right there. Split that again. And then I'm going to come down like this with my little upside down V, like this. And we're going to get this kind of drawn in just a little bit. And I'm, I'm really being aware of how much space is between the side of the nose and the side of the face, like this. And then it, it kind of tilt, tilts out like that. Then we make this part goes up and this kind of comes in like that around. We've got this muzzle. Okay, this is the muzzle part. And I'm going to come up here. I, I feel like I'm tilting that. I'm trying to straighten that thing out again. I don't know why I do that, but I do. And we're going to come out like this. Okay. Here is the shape and the little hourglass. I'm going to get a little medium on there. The, and the hourglass is dark. So we have a dark little hourglass that we're going to use that perpendicular line to make sure that we don't deviate again from that the angle of this. I want to get this back again. Ooh, just crazy how this happens. Just, it, you just want to pull it the other direction every time. Every time. And then here's the little tongue marking right here. Okay. So now uh, I have this. I have this little eyeball that will sit right about there. And uh, let's see, I'll make it a little darker. And then here's another, let's see, I'll go up here and up here, and then here's the other eyeball. Nope, let's see, one, two, three, it's over here. Oh my goodness, have I ever moved that over too far. All right, isn't this funny? It's just so funny how you, you tend to want to straighten things out. You've really got to be careful. When you're talking, it's very hard to focus, so I don't often film my uh, the stuff that I'm actually going to be sending to people um, because when you're talking it's hard to, to do it accurately. I'm hoping that I get this accurate. If I don't then I'll make another one. I just will. 
Okay, so there it starts. And uh, this is similar, you know, it's gonna be similar to that, um, that crazy golden retriever puppy that we did uh, last year or the year before. And uh, that was a fun one. I love that one. Turned out so nice. Now, let's see, I've got this ear and uh, I've got this angle. I'm, I'm matching angles. I'm just trying to match the angles. I've been having some really serious trouble with my hands lately. They've just injected them with uh, my um, thumb with uh, some sort of a steroid of some sort. But I find it so hard for me not to be able to hold on to my photo reference and get a, a good likeness. I'm so used to holding it in this hand and being able to, to just, you know, um, use that to connect to my brain. And so now I'm having to readjust uh, to having the photo sitting off to the side. Not an easy thing for me. Not an easy thing. Okay, so I think at this stage what I really want to do is I'm going to do a thinned out version. I'm going to put a little bit of this uh, burnt umber, which is kind of color of brick, put a little bit of orange in it. We're going to start out with uh, this dark area right around the eyes, like this. Make sure that we have that place just right. Looks pretty good so far. And this has almost got a little peek and easy looking head. It's a little square at the top. And then it's dark underneath like this, a little bit darker. So I'm gonna add some burnt umber and some raw or burnt sienna. And underneath the chin, we're gonna make this nice and dark like that. I keep that brush a little bit wetter so that it goes a little more smoothly like this and it's very very dark around the little tongue so I'll make that what is behind first if I possibly can and I'll put this up like that okay this brush is so floppy I'm about ready to switch out and get another brush I'll be right back okay I moved up to a, um, a filbert and uh, it's about it's a size 10 it's just a little bit a little bigger. Now, you know, mind you, there. it seems to me that brushes uh, don't always, um, if you say a size 10 in one brush, it's not going to be the same as in another. So it's just one of those weird things that aren't standard for some reason. It doesn't feel like they are. I'm going to fill in this muzzle really, really fast with kind of a middle, uh, darker middle tone in the raw sienna. I'm going to just fill it in like that. Get a little bit more on my brush. A little bit of burnt sienna with a little bit of raw sienna. And we're going to come up here around in this dark area in the forehead. I'm going to go as fast as I can now. Just filling in. is you know, it's a lot of filling in with painting and, and you just sometimes I wish I could just hire somebody to just fill in the stuff, you know, just so that I can save my hands for all the juicy part. I think that's what Rembrandt did. A few of them uh, got somebody to just do all the all the basic filling in part. They design the painting and, and then they get their apprentices to do all the rest of the stuff and then you come in and put on all the juicy parts. Wouldn't that just be fun? You get to design it and then have somebody else do the rough stuff. Yeah. All right, so uh, next I'm gonna take a little bit of that transparent orange and I'm gonna add white to it, okay? This is just crazy, beautiful orange, beautiful. Look at how beautiful that is. And we'll put a little bit more of that medium on. It just feels kind of dry. And we'll pull this out and uh, get it going like this. It's fun. I, you know, every year I think, okay, well, I think I'll probably get burnt out on dogs at some point. And, and you know, I just don't. I, I love, I love painting them. They're so much fun. They're so much fun. And they bring such delight to people. You know, I've heard so many people say, oh, it was such a success. I, I got notes from people that ordered last year or the year before, and they just said, people love them so much. We, we want to order some more. Can we get some more? Oh, sure. Why not? So I'm getting that going. I'm noticing some purple in the uh, the ear, so uh, I'm going to lay out some purple here just a second. 
Okay, so I put a little bit of uh, cobalt violet out. Um, you can use a lot of different kinds of purples. And if you put a little purple in with a little bit of white, and then you add a little bit of raw sienna. So I put a little bit of a, a tan color with a purple color. It makes for a wonderful shadow effect, just like this. This cobalt violet. And you get a real cobalt violet. Man, those things are expensive. I remember buying a tube just thinking, I gotta figure out what that is. I'm so curious about it. And uh, But that is a wonderful glowing opposite on the color wheel kind of uh, color right here. So this is just a little cobalt violet with a little bit of raw sienna and a little bit of white. And I think I'll throw some in over here and just, I'm going to fill in the ear with a little bit of that. It's just a glowy color, isn't it? Just neat. So cobalt violet with a little bit of raw sienna and some, maybe just a tiny bit of white, just so it's not super dark, super dark like that. I know this looks really, really crazy, you guys, but uh, it'll work out, I hope. All right. So now I'm going to add uh, now a little bit of that orange color to it and, and a little more white. I'm going to light, start lightening it up a little bit as I go. So now I'll put a little bit there. I'm going to mark it uh, with just some angles and uh, make sure I have the angles right and the layout right. So this is again um, transparent orange with a little tiny bit of our, with a lot of white. Okay. Transparent orange with some white and a tiny bit of violet. And I'm going to go right up over the eye and make that nose, that little muzzle to start coming out next to the nose. It's a little bit lighter now. I work from kind of dark to middle tone to light if I possibly can. I do that in my portraits as well. So that's just part of basic oil painting. There are a lot of different ways to approach, but this is one of the, the main ways of doing oil painting is to begin with a basic drawing at a middle tone, then put your darks and or, or go dark middle tone and then light. You, you put your lights on at the very end if possible. Sometimes it's good though to do something like this. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Sometimes it's good to take maybe a very light value and figure out where you're going to go, all right, where you're going to end up. I find waiting till the very end to put in all the highlights or the lightest lights, um, sometimes I don't get light enough, okay? And it just looks, you know, like if I'm painting a person, they have a slightly different ethnicity. So I have to watch out for that. So I'm going to find where, maybe where the lightest lights are going to go, just to give myself a little hint. There's a little bit down here. Uh, I've got a, a really light light right there. So now I'm starting to kind of understand where I'm going to go. Keeping it nice and loose, everybody. Not too, not painting every tiny little hair yet. No way. You know, if that's your thing, at some point, okay, that's fine. But start out loose no matter what, all right? Don't start out, you know, painting five hairs at a time or little tiny hairs. It's just a, it's a miserable experience. It is for me anyway. Okay, now back into our kind of orangish, a little bit of an orangish color right here underneath the eye. Isn't this cute? It's so cute. I'm going to warm it up a little bit, make sure that muzzle's looking good. A little bit there. Get rid of some of this turquoise. I like painting on turquoise when it comes to these uh, really warm colored dogs because it just bounces, the color just bounces off so nice. I just love it. It's a lovely, lovely combination. Sometimes it's hard for people to decorate around it, but uh, you know, you can ask for other colors, everybody. You don't have to, in fact, don't just, don't just trust me to <laughs> give you the, uh, the color. Uh, you, you can say, oh, I want a red background. I want a black background. I want a green one. You can say whatever you like. That's the neat thing about ordering paintings. The only thing I don't do is the same color as the dog. Like I wouldn't paint a white dog on a white canvas, probably. Yeah. Okay. Now we're getting there. All right. Now I need some uh, red color. I need a nice pink. Uh, let's see what we got going here. This one is called another one of those fun, oh, carmine or carmine. 
C A L K A. I don't know what that is. Carmine. Hello. Okay, this one's Carmine. Let's try that. I'm going to squeeze that out. Oh, actually, yeah, that's perfect. Boy, this is getting tough. I am going to now hire somebody very shortly to uh, come and just be my paint tube squeezer person. What a job, huh? I've got one of these little things that, that twists around and, and helps a little bit, but I, I need a metal one so that it's a little bit stronger. And it's tough getting old, I'll tell you. Really tough. And I'm not that old. Okay. So, okay, so now I've got a little bit of carmine. Uh, it's a red color. You can use all kinds of different colors. This one is a pinky pink. And so, uh, pink, and I'm going to add just a tiny bit of, of the orange to it because it's just too pink. You can adjust it. You can adjust your pink by adding a transparent orange. Uh, you can adjust it by adding purples and blues and all kinds of different things. So if it's not the right color, just adjust it. Okay, so now I'll go in. I'm going to put this little pink tongue in like this. Make a little pinky, and it looks like it goes a little bit that way. And it's not real big, so I've got to be careful I don't put a big bleh sticking out. Just a nice little pink thing there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of purple with the carmine and create that shadow. So it's not just, you know, pink sticking out. So there's purple and carmine for the shadow into the tongue. And then I'll go with adding a little bit of white everything and we'll make this part uh, the kind of highlight there on the tongue and a little bit there okay that's a nice start that's a nice start okay now I'm gonna come back in and we're going to grab some burnt sienna and I need to cool that down with a little bit of raw umber and we'll put that with a, some uh, some medium on there. I'm going to make this eye a little bit of a tear duct there and some stuff that goes around it. A little bit darker there, some dark here. So now I'm really making sure that I don't have any major holes in my canvas, you know, like where the, the purple is sticking out. Going around, doing the negative shape around the tongue, kind of cutting in a little bit there. I don't want to make this a sharp edge thing, so I'm going to kind of soften it up a little bit there. And we're going to go back in with that raw, raw, raw umber, maybe a tiny bit of black, so it's nice and nice and dark right here, right there. And it stands, that tongue starts standing out. Nice. Very, very good. And then it comes under like this. Stick that right there. I need that nostril back in. There's a little... That goes along here and like that. And I'm realizing now that the eye needs to come down farther. Well, isn't that special? You can adjust it. One there, and then I'm gonna move that one down here. So I'm now moving the eyes down. Sometimes you have to do that, especially when you start out as loose as I just did. And now we're gonna go back into that lighter color that lighter tan color with a little bit of that orange and raw sienna and white. And I'm going to adjust that like that there. See, adjust, adjust. If you can't adjust, don't paint. So who used to say that? I think that was Helen Van Wyck. She was one of my favorite, favorite artists to uh, watch. Never forget when I was uh, first sick with uh, rheumatoid back when I was 45 years old. I couldn't move at all, and so my husband picked up a bunch of Helen Van Wyck videos, and I would watch them until 5 in the morning, you know, when you first uh, get this crazy illness. Uh, you can't do anything, and you can't sleep, so I would just watch them until I fell asleep. And so half the time I wonder if some of the words coming out of my head to this day are really her words that come out. I, I just learned it by osmosis, by, by laying there, listening to them. They're just so, you know, you, you just uh, absorb, absorb things like that. So, got to make sure you're not watching a horror movie when you fall asleep. That's what you'll end up absorbing. So, 
Anyway, I'm very thankful for her life and all the stuff that she did. She had cancer and, and uh, kept filming. And so she's an inspiration to me, you know, to say, hey, if she could do it in the middle of chemotherapy, I can do it in the middle of mine. All right. And be joyful. You know, be joyful. In the middle of all of our craziness, be joyful. Okay, now. Uh, we got this going on, and now I'm going to, you know, I just put a few little hairs here and there. Isn't that coming along? It's so cute, isn't it? Now, I'm going to get a smaller brush, uh, maybe one with a little bit more of a, yeah, a little bit of a, uh, a what's called a round. All right, a round is something that has, um, you know, it's got a point on the end of it, and, uh, and it's round, yeah. The, the uh, bristles are round. And I'm going to take uh, our black are, are just solid black. I don't use a lot of black. Uh, I usually make black, but uh, on on pupils of eyes, I will always, uh, most of the time, 99% uh, of the time, I will go in and I'm going to put in that pupil with with black. And uh, if you find that you're you've got too much paint on there already, and you're having a hard time getting that paint to really stand out or it mixes in with something else. Here's one thing to do. You can kind of come in and you can go in with a Q-tip and wipe out any of the paint that's kind of uh, in your way. If you've got a huge area that is uh, just too much paint, I've watched uh, one of our artist friends um, use a newspaper and just put it down on there and kind of absorb the, the extra stuff on it. Now you can see where those pupils are gonna go because I've just wiped that out. Now I'm going to put in uh, my, my paintbrush into some black and, and now I'm going to put those little pupils in. Uh, the, you know, the bigger they are, the more friendly the dog looks. If I put, I'll just show you the difference over here. If I put just a tiny little dot there, that looks really scary. You know, that's a scary eyeball. So I want to make sure that they're nice and, and big. And then I'll leave a little space for the, the dark brown, and we're going to come up around and give it a nice uh, little shadowy line around the outside, like that. Make that just a little bit bigger. And uh, do the same thing over here. So I've got this cute little sad mark going up this way, so it looks kind of, kind of sweet, a little sad. And then uh, we'll swing it around underneath like this. I should do a giant dog eye for you at some point. That'd be probably helpful, wouldn't it? Now, uh, this one's a chocolate brown, uh, so I'll, I'll use like mm, burnt, burnt uh, umber, and I might put a little bit of white with it. Burnt umber and white. Uh, maybe, maybe a little warmer. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Our light's coming from over here to my right, and it's going to come out underneath the eye right there. So I just make a little comma with that uh, lighter color right there. Okay, see that? And then I'm gonna go in with a, a dot of white. I'm gonna cross over the color of the eye with the pupil. And I'm gonna put a little dot at about, I'd say about 1.30. If that was a clock, it'd be about 1.30. Little tiny, don't get the pupils too big. It gets weird if you make, not the pupils, the highlight's too big. It just gets too weird if you do that. So watch out for that. Now I'm going to come down over here and I'm going to add just a tiny light right on the rim. Maybe just a little bit into the, the light of the eye. And I'll just scumble it. I wipe my brush off and then I'm going to just scumble it a little bit like that. Me, 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 me. A little bit like that. Like that. Okay. Now I do want to come back in with another one of those. These are... Make sure you get things within reach, you guys. You don't put everything out and stand on your head to get stuff. That's a little silly. I'm realizing that I need to do the same thing with this nose, so I'm going to rebuild this by taking off the excess paint one more time. And now I'll go in with my little uh, black, and I'll go in and put in a line right down the center, like that, again, and redraw. There's my little nostrils, like that, like that. Put those nostrils in, put that like this, a little V at the bottom. And we'll just kind of play around with that just a tiny bit, like that. Okay, 
looking pretty good. That feels like it needs a little bit darker on the edge, so we'll come around. Oh, I see, it's very, very dark in the bottom of that eye, right there. Nice big button eyes. And then at the top, uh, let's go with that burnt sienna with some of that dark brown. And I'm just going to come in like this right up underneath the eye. I want it dark right at the top of the eye, right here. So I'm making it dark, and then it's a little bit lighter at the bottom of the eye. See how that light is down here, and there's light down here like that, just like that. And then I'm going to come back in and restate where all these facial markings are. So just a little bit like that, making sure they're correct. I'm going to take a look at it just for a second, and I'll be right back just to make sure that since I'm sitting off to the side, that I haven't messed up the angles from the fact that I'm not directly right in front of it. When you're painting, don't forget always to sit directly right in front of your painting, eye to eye with your critter, nose to nose if possible. And, uh, and if you can, keep it straight up and down, not laying out flat. You'll have distortion if you lay it out like that. So I'll be right back. I'm just going to take a really close look at it and see what we need to do next. Well, it looks pretty good. I'm going to add a little bit of highlight here on the nose. This is a bit more uh, kind of a yellowish light right here. So I want to make sure that I remember that this is a plane of the nose. The nose would be completely flat if I painted it all one tonal value. So I want to kind of come down a little bit. I'm going to add some purple to it. A little bit of purple in the middle of that yellow. And then I'll drag it down. Uh, it's such a delicate thing to try to figure out how to keep the line in the middle of that nose and then make it dark enough to where it's got this plane going downward and then the nice light plane on the top. That's just the surface of the nose. So you got to really look at it really, really hard and figure it out. And then there's just a few little, little mustachey little things that kind of will help the light part of the mustache you think is stick out. And then I want to get into some nice super light. Watch this. Here we go. I'm going to come up here on top of the nose like that, like there. And then I've got this little wet spot right there. Is there another one? Yes, it's a little bit of a, an area there. And I'll take some of that since it's on my brush and create those little whiskers coming down. I've just got it on its edge like this. I flatten it out real good with my towel, just pinch that thing and flatten it out to where it looks like there's some, some whiskers right there. Get my little uh, transparent orange and white and lots and lots of white this time. We're going to get lighter and lighter and lighter. And so I'm going to come in here. Oop, I'm going to pinch it, pinch it, pinch it, pinch it nice and flat. And we'll see if we can get a few more little furry things right here. Anything else? Here's this part right here. There's a little a little area that's kind of cute uh, that defines that little cheek right around the outside of the eye. I've got that. This is around, and then this this hair kind of comes out above the eye. Let's do it again. A little bit more of our gel, and I'm going to add even more white this time. I want to get it lighter and lighter as we go. This one's already pretty light right there. Okay, now this is pretty light there, and then we have some little squigglies for things that go like that. Oh, squiggly, squiggly, like this, and then some hair that comes in there. Now, I don't want to just leave that flat out like this, so I'm going to take the edge of those just around the outside of that little highlight and kind of smooth it out to where it's not just a big, big line that draws your eye right in and and causes a problem. So here we go. Here's some more uh, little tiny hairs. Oh, isn't that cute? At the bottom of the chin and right around. I'm going to refocus that little spot around the nose. It starts standing. It pulls that muzzle right out like that. What's happening on the top of this? It goes up and down, kind of like a flattened M. And then right down the center of this part, it's got a nice light. It kind of works its way out like that. So a little light there, like that. Okay, same thing over on the ears. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to come over here. We're going to start creating some little 
super light. See, I saved a little bit of that light to the right, right to the end. And I'm just pulling that in like that, creating a wonderful, um, lots of, of interest by starting out dark and then moving to middle and then adding that beautiful, wonderful light. I'm going to add a little bit more of that transparent orange in here just to warm it up. Transparent orange is the most important color in my dog painting quiver. Okay, it's just uh, really, really important. It's just a lovely thing. You can put it down straight and it's just orange. And if you add some uh, white to it, it turns into this wonderful yellow, uh, warm, warm yellow. And so now let's, um, this top part of the head is not really all that light, but I'm gonna give it a tiny bit of a highlight. And we'll just keep going with this, this ear over here. And what's happening under here? This has got a little bit of a, a little bit of a light here, but not that light. So I'll move some of the dark paint into it, just like that. I want this to be more into the orange realm. So I'm gonna add some more of that transparent orange, warm it up. And uh, I think this whole part of the head needs to be a little bit darker with the orange and a little bit of raw or burnt uh, sienna, the brick color with the orange. Absolutely beautiful, working out. And it's coming together just very, very nicely. Okay, I'm gonna put that color down here as it goes over the sweater. And of course, we have gotta add the little sweater in too. So let's get on to that and then I'll, I'll let you go and see if you can figure out how to do it yourself, okay. Okay, it looks a little bit silly, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the background in a wet color. This is acrylic underneath, you guys. I'm gonna paint some oil over the top, and then I'm gonna kind of merge and fuzz out that sweater just a little bit so it doesn't stand out like, you know, a sore thumb. All right, so I hope this was kind of fun for you, and next time we meet, I'm gonna do whatever I feel like doing, okay? I'm not gonna promise you anything. I'm gonna have some fun. And don't forget to go visit my Etsy site and order yourself a dog painting, please. That would be really helpful. Okay. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.